Hi, this is Jerry Mathers, the Beaver, and you're listening to Rob and Randy on the 25th Hour Radio Show. Radio Show. Hello. Hey, Jerry. This is Rob Fairless with the 25th Hour Radio Show, and I got Randy, my co-host, right beside me. How you doing tonight, sir? I'm doing real good. How you guys doing? Oh, we're doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, how's the weather out there? Hot. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. Same here. Do you get a lot of humidity in California? No, we have uh, pretty much dry heat. It's a little hum- more humid now, humid now but I live uh, on the north end of Los Angeles, so I'm in the desert, so it's hot heat. Yeah, yeah, we get a lot of humidity where we live, so it's real muggy. Yeah, I've lived in Florida and places like that, and I know what that feels like. They're both bad. It's hot no matter what it is, if it's humid or not. I think humid's worse, though, probably. So you ready for the big Superman movie tomorrow? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear you. Hey, uh, Jerry, let's, let me, let's start off with Leave it to Beaver, if you would. Uh, okay. How did you get that role? Did you have to audition, or were you handpicked ahead of time? No, that, that interview had about 8,000 people on it, and I that sounds like a huge number, but it was everybody, what they said is they wanted two brothers and then their friends, and they interviewed in New York, Chicago, and L.A., so there was like two or 3,000 people in, uh, in each of those cities, um, and it was a very long interview, and we kept going back and back, because what they do, they'd, they'd put two of you together as the two brothers, and then they'd pick the the friends and you'd walk in and read a little bit so we went on that interview probably with my mom probably four or five times and i had just joined the cub scouts and my very first meeting um, as a cub scout was uh, on a certain day and i got home from school and was ready to go to my meeting and my mom said jerry you know you got to call back and i said well that's fine but i have a meeting today and she said well you know it's not going to be like all those people they're down to like the last four or five so we'll go there, and your meeting's not till like an hour, an hour and a half after school. So we can go there. You can go to the interview, come back. I said, okay, that'll work. But you know how those things always work. I was the last one in, and I got really antsy because I hate to be late. And so I walked in, and I was ready to leave right off the bat. And they'd known me pretty well because they had seen me quite a few times. They said, what's the matter, Jerry? Uh, is something wrong? And I said, well, I've got some place to go. I have to go to a Cub Scout meeting, and I'm going to be late. And they said, okay, you can go. Now, all the other kids, the, the six or seven that were being considered had been in there like 10, 15, 20 minutes. I walked in and walked right out. My mom said, well, Jerry, what happened? How come you came out so fast? And I said, they asked me if I wanted to be here. I said, no, I had a Cub Scout meeting, and they said go. <laughs> and my mom kind of went, that probably wasn't the best thing to tell them because now they figure that you don't want to, you know, you don't even participate or whatever. And I said, well, I'd rather be at my Cub Scout meeting. They called that night and said I had the job as the beaver on a new series. Because they'd rather have a little boy that wanted to be a Cub Scout than a, than an actor. That's how I got the job. Jerry, how how how'd you avoid all the traps that that have snared so many child actors? I mean, you um, got You know what? Yeah, it's 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 actually in some ways for me very easy. It's not that I'm a saint or anything else, but I had the perfect parent for a child actor. A lot of those people, and I'm not going to tell you which ones, but some of the other child actors that I know. Not only were their parents living off the money that they were making, but sometimes one of them I know in particular had an extended family, an aunt and an uncle and three kids, and they told this poor guy that every day that he didn't work, his family might starve and they might be out in the street. Mm. So they put the whole stress of, you know, supporting the family on this one kid. Um, My dad was fully employed, but not only was he fully employed, he was in the school system. When I was doing Leave it to Beaver, he was the principal of the school. So he knew, you know, kids, and uh, he was fully employed, and it, it just worked out really well. But he knew all the pitfalls, because as I say, he was dealing with the very best of kids, but also the very worst. Now, was he as strict as your, your television father was, you Beaumont? You know, I never really thought that uh, Ward was all that strict. <laughs> now, my dad, when I was just first starting Leave it to Beaver, he, he believed in corporal punishment. In fact, every year 
the senior class would present the the spanking board, basically what it what it was, that to the uh, junior class that they made in wood shop. And so he would bring home the one from the last year. So that was quite an incentive to be a lot better. Now, when you first started, TV was like you know brand new. You know, if you absolutely yeah, if you owned the TV, it was a huge deal. You know, there wasn't too many child actors at the time. Would you say you opened the door for other children to become actors? Um, no, because there were a lot of child actors. I mean, they were on the stage, they were doing other things. But no, there was no television community. There was an acting community of children here, Elizabeth Taylor, Mickey Rooney, all the people, but they only did movies. And um, there's kind of like a caste system for actors. The, the 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 premium thing you can do is be in a stage play. The very best thing you can do is be in New York on Broadway. Then the next step down was movies. The next step down was you know television. So it was kind of like you know it's just a new thing that it just started. You did quite a few things before Beaver though, didn't you? Oh yeah, I worked all the time. Actually, it was just by accident. My mom was from Minnesota. My dad was from Iowa. And he came out here uh, before I was born to go to USC under the GI Bill because he'd been a World War II pilot. He was a bomber pilot and flew 25 missions over Germany. And he went to USC. I was born in Iowa, and then they came out here when I was about a year old. And uh, so my dad started in the school system. And at two years old, my mom was in a department store. And, of course, he was a coach at the time, and he wasn't making a whole lot of money, so she was kind of looking for deals and things. And a woman walked up to her and said, is this your little boy? And she said, yes. You know, he, he didn't touch anything or do anything wrong. She said, no, no, no. <laughs> I just uh, wanted to ask you. He fits our two-year-old clothes perfectly, and we're having a fashion show, and the two-year-old boy has outgrown him. Could your son be a model? And my mom, being from Minnesota, kind of went, well, she thought this might be a big city kind of trick, and said, I... I just don't know about that. I don't know if I'd be interested. And the lady said, well, not only would we pay him, but we, he could keep the clothes he wore. My mom said, he could probably do that. <laughs> yeah, so that's how, I actually, yeah, I, that's how I actually started. And people don't realize that in film, which I told you were the actors here in Hollywood, if you make a mistake, you just go back and redo it. Television, when it started, was all live. And so the only kids, like in New York, they could find kids because they worked on the Broadway stage. Here in California, all the people were movie actors. So when they went around looking for very small kids, you know, they said, well, wait a minute, the models, they work in front of an audience. Maybe they could work. So my very first job was at two years old. It was on um, a show with Ed Wynn. It was a, basically a comedy hour where they did skits. And I did the, a commercial for Pet Milk, which is uh, Pet Milk is the canned milk. And at that time, that was used as baby formula. And I'd walk through uh, like a bar into a bar with the swinging type doors, those half doors on a bar. I'd actually walk just under them. Um, and I, there were all these cowboys fighting and breaking chairs over their heads and stuff. One of them would pick me up and put me on the bar. I had on big cowboy boots, uh, a 10 gallon hat, six guns, and diapers, and that's it. And I'd pound on the bar and say, I'm the toughest hombre in these parts, and you better have my brand and Ed Wynn would go into a commercial for Pet Milk. And once I did that right, I worked on all the other live things because they couldn't, these things were in front of a live audience too, and they couldn't take a chance that another child might not understand what was going on, walk out there and either panic, forget their line, or not do what they were supposed to. So once you did it right once, as long as you kept doing it right, which I did, you worked all the time. Now you were real young, but you got to work alongside like James Cagney and Bob Hope in the movie, you know, The Seven Little Foys. Right. And, and, you know, work with Alfred Hitchcock and The Trouble with Harry, with John Forsythe and Shirley MacLaine. Do you do you have any backstage memories of working alongside such amazing oh, yeah. actors? You know, it, it's, it's pretty much, and I'm sure you remember, you know, important things that happened to you maybe in school when you were that age. You know, I was like, by that time, I was like five, six, eight, nine, and, you know, around in those ages. So, yes, I have very good memories. Um you know, Alfred Hitchcock, I spent a lot of time with. Actually, I was doing a, uh, a another live show. This was several years later, and it was August, and it was very, very hot. And I was doing, I think it was called Lux Video Theater, if I remember right. And it was so hot with all the lights and backstage. It was a live show, so you had to be very quiet because anything that happened went out. 
And um, I saw a drinking fountain, and I went out and said my lines, but I had to come back off the set and over to my mother, and then I would had to go back. And I said, Mom, I'm so thirsty. Can I go get a drink of water? And she was afraid I might trip or make some noise. She said, no, no, no. Do you have one more line, and I'll get you some. And I said, but, Mom, I'm so hot. And all of a sudden, this jolly man walked over and said, oh, don't worry, Mrs. Mathis. I'll take him over. Don't worry about it. And about five weeks later, I go on an interview, and there's that same man sitting behind the desk. He said, hi, Jerry. Uh, how would you like to go to Vermont with me and do a movie? And it was Alfred Hitchcock. Well, that's amazing. That's really cool. You know, yeah. was, uh, and when I was doing Leave it to Beaver, he was doing Alfred Hitchcock Presents, and he'd always pull up in his big limousine with a chauffeur driving, roll down the window if I was walking around the studio back lot or whatever, and he'd say, oh, hello, Mr. Mathis. How are we doing today? <laughs> That's great. So he was always a very good friend of mine. You know, on the set of Beaver, when the cameras weren't rolling, what was your relationship like with your TV family? Um, you know, it's kind of probably like people that, uh, maybe you had teachers in school that were your favorite teachers. I mean, not, not only the TV family, you got, but you have to realize there was about 80 people on the set, permanent like cameramen, sound men, lighting men. And, you know, basically their jobs depended on me and Tony and the other kids being happy. Now, the adult actors, of course, were being paid, but, you know, kids don't care about money. So it was really a fun time for me because everyone tried to make it, you know, as pleasant and happy as it could be just so I would be happy and want to come back every day. And I loved it there. I mean, I, you know, it was just the most fun place you could ever be. So now, now it wasn't originally called Leave it to Beaver, was it? Um, no, it started out as Wally and the Beaver, but that show, that show name never aired because people uh, in the, uh, uh, the advertising industry said that they didn't uh, think they could sponsor it because it sounded too much like a... Uh, some sort of an animal show like Lassie. Um, so that's when it became Leave It to Beaver. I don't know how they came up with that name, but it's stuck and it's not bad. No, no. It, it rings a bell with a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Now, Leave It to Beaver was still drawing an audience at the time, but if I'm not mistaken, everyone decided it was just time to pursue different things. What did, what did you do after the show ended? Well, I got very lucky um, because I wanted to go to a regular high school. Because of when Leave it to Beaver started, I was in the first grade. Uh, actually, I'd done a movie right before Leave it to Beaver. So I had never been in school with another child because when you're, um, when you're working on a set, you have a private tutor. Now, they're from the Los Angeles school, uh, and because my father went on to become, he was a superintendent at L.A. schools, but like uh, Tony and I, because he was in high school, I was in uh, elementary school, had different teachers, but Tony always had an interest in art, um, the guy that played Wally, and he always had people that had a doctorate in art for his teacher, and he just opened a piece in the uh, Louvre in France, because now he's a sculptor. Myself, I was just, you know, in, in elementary school, so he would just pick me some of the best teachers each year from the L.A. Unified School District. So do you and Tony, do you still keep in touch? Yeah, we're good friends. You know, it's probably like somebody you grew up with. Um, you know, if you had a really special friend, uh, maybe in, in, in kindergarten that you've known all your life and just, you know, always kept coming around. And um, it's a good thing. We're both, we both like each other real well. In fact, everybody on the, uh, the cast and crew, I mean, we've lost a few people. Hugh Beaumont has passed, Barbara Billingsley just uh, about a more, little over a couple weeks ago, uh, Frank Bank, who played Lump, because, mm. you know, a lot of those guys are, are getting, you know, kind of up there. I just turned 65 June 2nd, so I'm getting up there myself in some ways. Well, happy birthday to you, belated. Uh, thank you. You know, the show was really a, a new genre compared to what was on back then. Did, did audiences receive it well? Um, yes. Um, you know, we our big competition was Maverick, um, uh, but we were a show that a lot of people watched. Um, we were actually, though, to be really honest with you, much more popular when we went into syndication because it, when it went into syndication, it started showing three and four times a day all over the country and basically all over the world because it plays in uh, about 46 languages, and I forget how many countries all over the world. And I'm, I've grown up watching Leave it to Beaver. Uh, my mom oh, turned me yeah. on to it when I was a kid, and i got to tell you this while i got a chance. Okay. My favorite episode is the one where you climb up in that soup cup <laughs> where that woman's holding that cup. Yep. That's hilarious, man. 
you know, where, where Whitey said, put your, put your foot on the lady's thumb beaver. Yeah, I mean, it's funny Actually, you getting in there, but what, what really cracked me up is you're yeah. in there, you're stuck in there, and, and that jerk Eddie Haskell is down there just, hey, somebody save my baby, just, just razzing it up, man. Yeah, well, you know, Ken Osmond is so different from him, but Eddie Haskell's a, not a, he's really a, pretty much a terrible person. Ken Osmond <laughs> is a police hero. After he got out of Leave to Beaver, he became a motorcycle cop and got shot in the line of duty, and they had to retire him. But he is just the nicest guy. Actually, that Leave it to Beaver um, was the most expensive one we ever did because they had to build that back that billboard on the back lot and also on the stage. So for the next three shows after that, we couldn't have any other people in the cast, like people that they would have to bring in extra people because they spent their whole budget for three shows on that one show just building the billboard. Now, was that really you climbing up that billboard? Because when I was watching, I was like, man, that's a little it kid actually, climbing uh, up the – that's high. Yeah. Well, they, they hired a, uh, 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 a little person, um, and I, I don't think it was Billy Barty. I can't remember the guy's name. He's a really nice guy, though. But it, they said when they, and then I, I climbed up, they said, Jerry, could you climb up there? I said, yes. So I climbed up there, and then they had him do it. He did a couple things where it looked a lot more dangerous, where he acted like he was going to fall and stuff like that. But um, they, they, it just didn't look enough like me. He was, you know, a, kind of a different size, just kind of his body type. You knew immediately it wasn't me. So they all the scenes of me climbing up there are really me, even though they had, other things that they could have used, they said it just looked better with me. Now you it wasn't jo- quite as exciting, but it, it looked better. <laughs> now, you joined the military, you know, the Air National Guard. I think it was, what, 66? 60, yep. Okay. And I spent six years in the, the National Guard. Um, then I went to, uh, on to school to Berkeley. I have a degree in philosophy from Berkeley, and I was planning on probably going back into acting, but when I was getting ready to graduate, as I said, I'd used my money to and I'd been investing it and living off the interest. And the bank that I was doing that with, the guy said, you know, Jerry, I know you're going to go on to law school and become a lawyer. But he said, I just wanted to tell you, I've watched you handle your money. And if you want a job, the day you get your degree from Berkeley, I will hire you as a bank officer. And you'll know more about business and everything else because every business has to deal with the bank. So I spent about five years as a banker. I then realized that I was making a lot of really big loans to people, and they were buying all this stuff and making commissions, uh, the real estate people. So then I went into real estate, and when I did that, my time became a lot freer. Uh, Tony asked me if I wanted to do a stage play with him. We did uh, a play in Kansas City, and it sold out for five weeks in like two hours. They extended it for another three weeks, and that sold out. And the guy that did it said, you know what, what if we toured it? And the next thing I knew, I was an actor again. Now, what play was that? It was called So Long, Stanley. It was an original work that was actually written for Broadway for Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis by Schiller and Weiskopf, who were the same people that wrote All in the Family. But um, uh, Lewis and Martin got in that big fight and each owned half. And so it never went to Broadway. So it was an unproduced Broadway play by two of the top writers in Hollywood. And we bought the rights to it and uh, toured it for uh, about a year, and uh, almost a year and a half. Now, I want to go back real quick to your, your military career. Sure. Was it tough being a celebrity, going through your basic military training? Were the guys tougher on you? Um, you know, not really. Every, you know, they, they pick on everybody there. I had a nice D.I., you know, he knew who I was. Everybody there pretty much knew who I was, but it wasn't like I got any special treatment. You know, I was—I did every exercise, every, you know, I got yelled at, I went through every inspection and got gigged. And, you know, I, I liked the military. I, I had uh, always uh, looked forward to serving my country. So it wasn't like it was something that I was really afraid of or didn't want to do. I, you know, wasn't anti-draft. I, I enlisted. Well, I want to ask you about this, you and Tony Dow. Uh, I read somewhere that, that you guys were the first non-athletes on a box of cornflakes. Is that true, or is that just... Absolutely. In about uh, 82, when we did the new Leave it to Beaver, cornflakes came to us and said, we would like to uh, put you on our cornflakes box. And Tony and I were absolutely, you know, just what an honor. And they said, and, you know, just so you know, it's always been athletes. And I'm not positive, but I don't think any other 
actors have ever been on. I think it's always been athletes. And I mean, it was Olympic athletes and just people that had done terrific things. And so it was just such an honor that we were both just blown away. Well, you guys are so iconic. I mean, I couldn't think of anybody else but the Beeve to be on some cornflakes. I mean, that's well, neato. That's neato. Yeah, uh, it was. Well, well, let me ask you this. You you actually had a, a music career for a while. A little oh, bit of I one. do. Actually, I still play music. I play with, um, it's called old-time music, which is kind of like folk music. When the people came over from Europe in the 16 and 1700s, they remembered their music, but they didn't have the elaborate instruments to play them, so they played it on guitars and mandolins and, uh, and such. And so I'm in a group with that. But I have recorded. I've recorded for Atlantic. Um, it did all right. It wasn't great. But you know what? I toured all over the country and uh, had a great time with uh, the band Beaver and the Trappers. I used to play places like amusement parks and things like that. It was it was a lot of fun. That was my summer job, and it was a lot better than doing some of the things other kids had to do. Now, I got very- with your music experience, did that help you out when you did uh, your Broadway with as Wilbur Turnbull? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And, you know, Broadway for an actor is the pinnacle. I mean, it's like... You know, the, that's the job that everybody wants to do. Um, I went into Hairspray. It had been running several years. In fact, when I went there, it was running at about 60%, and they were thinking possibly about closing it. And the night I, the first night I was there, they went to 95%, and uh, my fans came out and supported me in the most terrific way that the entire time I was there, it was standing room only. Now, you're also a spokesperson uh, for type 2 diabetes. Uh, didn't you testify before Congress at one time? Yes, I, to... uh, well, I, I didn't really testify. I went and spoke, yes, at, a, at, a, at a, uh, uh, a session about diabetes to the Congress, but uh, it was a panel. It wasn't to the, uh, to the, entire, the entire Congress. Okay. But, yes, I, uh, when, after I finished the new Leave it to Beaver, which was in the 80s, um, I acquired several businesses, and one of them was a catering business. And, you know, when you're a caterer, basically you're selling food, and so you're going out. And I put on about 60 pounds, and I have a very good friend that's a doctor, Mm -hmm. and she kept seeing me putting on all this extra weight. And she said, you know, Jerry, you better come in for a physical. And I said, I feel fine. You know, don't even worry about it. I know I put on a little weight, but it's no big deal. I looked around me. There were a lot of people that were even fatter than me, so I wasn't too worried about it. And so finally she knows me real well. She got me. She said, you know what, Jerry, for Christmas I'm going to give you a free physical. And I went, oh, well, I guess I can't turn that down. <laughs> went in there and got the physical, went back four days later, and she said, how would you like to see your kids graduate from high school? How would you like to do this in your life and that in your life? I said, yeah. She said, if you don't do something about your diabetes, you'll be dead in three to five years. Mm-hmm. And you could have knocked me over with a feather because mm-hmm. I didn't realize how sick I really was. And you ended, up, you ended up losing a lot of weight, too, though, didn't you? Yeah, I lost it all. I'm, I'm now within the eight pounds of what I was when I was in high school. Well, that's awesome. That but, awesome. you know, people don't realize that diabetes, uh, of course, you know, there's two types. There's type 1 and type 2. But type 2, a lot of it is caused by being overweight because your body just can't make enough insulin. And these little, uh, basically, power balls that are going into your blood to give your muscles energy if your pancreas doesn't make insulin, they just float in your bloodstream mm. and basically burn parts of your body. That's why, you know, the, the, one of the things of uh, diabetes is one of the first things that usually happens is you have your toes amputated because these things go down because of gravity, burn, the, burn your toes, and, you know, they die. So I just got very lucky, and I feel that I was lucky because I knew a doctor. I can use my celebrity to maybe help some of my fans and people that I don't even know at least find out if, you know, you're overweight, you better go in and get an A1C test and find out, uh, you know, how bad how bad it is. Well, Jerry, we're almost out of time, but uh, is there like a website or social media that oh, people absolutely. can go to that, to learn more you about you? Me, absolutely. You can get me right away either on Twitter at fa- or Facebook, and that's the Jerry Mathers because somebody already had Jerry Mathers. But my website, and I tell a lot of stories if you want to know more about Leave it to Beaver and all the different things I've done in my life, is www.jerrymathers.com. So Facebook and Twitter, if you want an immediate response, and it really is me, is the Jerry Mathers, and www.jerrymathers.com is the webpage. It's been an honor to have you on here, Mr. Mathers. Oh, Mr. You know Mathers. What? You can call me always Jerry, but... 
It's been nice talking to you, Robert. Radio Show. Show.